Well, my, my job uh, that I was given is, is to uh, read uh, something uh, by someone who reviewed the book. Uh, and, um, and I'll make a couple of comments after, after I do that. Uh, um, the, the, the person who uh, reviewed the book is, uh, I guess, kind of like a rock star of our profession in psychoanalysis, <laughs> you know? His name is uh, Robert Stollero. And uh, I'll just give you a little, uh, a little brief uh, uh, background on him. He's a, he's a psychoanalyst and a philosopher, well known for his works on intersubjectivity theory. Post, I, I'll be glad to explain that a little bit, by the way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you know, her book is really a, a reflection of his theory, uh, because his theory really talks about the, that that is intersubjective. He's really talking about the analyst having experience that he brings to the to the analytic treatment, and he brings himself. Uh, Post-Cartesian uh, psychoanalysis and emotional trauma. He's written about both. Important books include Faces in a Cloud, uh, which was written in 1979. That was really his first book. Structures of Subjectivity, Psychoanalytic Treatment, and Intersubjective Approach, Contexts of Being, Working Intersubjectively, Worlds of Experience, Trauma and the Human Experience, and World Affectivity, Trauma, Heidegger, and Post-Cartesian Psychoanalysis. Uh, and he's, he's not only written those books, but uh, many articles uh, that, uh, that have come out and speaks extensively. I think he would have been here if he, if he could have been. Um, these are his comments after he read, uh, read the book. I've written that traumatic loss shatters one's emotional world, and that insofar as one dwells in the region of such loss, one feels eradicated. In the words of philosopher Jacques Derrida, the world is suspended by some unique tear, reflecting disappearance itself. The world, the whole world, the world itself, for death takes from us not only some particular life, within the world, some moment that belongs to us, but each time without limit, someone through whom the world, and first of all, all our own world, will have opened up. A stretch of our living self, a world that is for us the whole world, the only world, sinks into an abyss. Now this is, this is his writing. In six moments of silence, K.T. Morgan provides a vivid and compelling first personal account of such shattering by chronicling the lifelong impact of the loss of her beloved cousin, Henry, in the collapse of the World Trade Center on September 11, 2001. The relationship between Morgan and Henry was one of deep emotional sharing and understanding, and he had been central in her emotional world. Thus, as she awaited Henry's death on the morning of 9-11, she felt that she herself was threatened with annihilation. Yet despite, or better, as a result of facing up to the devastation, Morgan was able to generate a new landscape of hope, memorializing Henry and his compassion by cultivating his qualities within her own expanding selfhood honoring his life by honoring her own. She left her unhappy marriage when her husband failed to be an understanding home for her agonizing grief, and she successfully pursued a career as a psychoanalyst devoted to the emotional well-being of others. All the while she searched for the emotional intimacy she lost when Henry died but often only refinding in her men the callous indifference of the terrorists of 9-11, what I call port keys to trauma. 
In the book, she gives us her gripping and inspiring saga of loss and reconstruction, longing and re-traumatization, a must read for anyone interested in the phenomenology of traumatic loss and its legacies.